Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. What's up, hoes? We are here to talk seeking sister wife. What a weird, wild journey we are on with this show. Insane. It's pretty crazy, honey. Yeah. Before we get into the latest episode, we definitely want to remind you to hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say bad words. We have dumb opinions. And so if you're fluffy you might want to find yourself another dumpster. But if you're down, and if you are ready to talk some shit about polygamists, yeah. welcome to this dumpster. Yeah. And if you are down and ready to talk mad shit, go follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. We have so much bonus content up there, and that's where we talk the most shit. And if you are watching on YouTube, first and foremost, hello, how are you doing? You look lovely today. Please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe. We're trying to grow this community yeah. and everything you do helps us to do exactly that. So thank, thank you. you in advance. Yes. Okay, we are here to talk Seeking Sister Wife. Yeah. Season th five, episode five. Yeah. Entitled Seeking is Complicated or something Seeking like that. Seeking can be complicated. So complicated. Yeah. When you're a predator pervert <laughs> predating <laughs> on women. When you want to cheat on your wife, but you yeah. have to go through all these extra steps. When you're a disgusting creeper. Yeah. It's so complicated. <laughs> it's so complicated. Yikes. Yeah. Big yikes. Do we want to start it? Yeah, let's go. Do you got go. any hot takes before we get into it? No, I mean, I had to suspend my my bile. You yeah. Know, I had to <laughs> suspend my immediate revulsion yeah. when Garrick came on the television. But I, I don't want to spend every single week just threatening his life with my brass knuckles. Why not? <laughs> I don't like him so deeply I can feel it in my butt. Yeah. I think he's a big fucking asshole yeah. and i hate his wife yeah i like to call her galane maxwell Ooh. i feel like she's facilitating his criminal activity his sex trafficking his sex trafficking <laughs> allegedly yeah but like she's facilitating it she she's is. a part of it and what i'm trying to get to the bottom of beatrice is why and maybe we can talk about it when we get into their segment but I'm like, are you a victim or mm -hmm. are you desperate trying to save your marriage, which we thought last week we were talking about this? Or, I mean, are you trying to get your rocks off? Like, I'm trying to figure this bitch out because he's just straight up despicable. Facts. But my eye is on her. So that's my major takeaway Yeah. <laughs> for this episode. I'm like, ooh. Yeah, I hate them so much. They are very hateable. I really don't like them at all. I try to give Danielle the benefit of the doubt sometimes because I'm like, well... Maybe she's a victim. But then I'm like, mm -mm. why? Why do you enable him? I don't know. My major takeaway was that I'm bored of the Davises already. Yeah, there's not I'm much like, going on there. Uh, okay, you're back, Danielle. That's fantastic. Did you ever really leave? You didn't leave. I don't think you did. And I, I think she's fucking April or something. I don't know. They're weird. I was watching Girl. that vibe, vibe check. Vibe check. Vibe, for real, for real. For no real. cap. No cap. I was like, that's something going on there. There's a zing zing when they're looking at each other. There and is. Danielle was calling her babe or I baby. Know. I'm like, Ooh. I was like, what is Does that? Does she say that when she's between her legs? No. I'm like, is the boom? room room for you guys i'll too? never leave you baby mm. <laughs> oh my god oh my I'm god just, sorry we'll I'm get getting, into them yeah we will we get into yeah them. they are boring though they are very boring the shibutis were back i know i was hoping we'd get a little bit of keisha see what but was we happening didn't. we didn't get an oh, i'm just jumping we're in. jumping in. all right it's fine all right well let's start with the mary fields because we fucking hate them and they're the first parts they're the first ones of the episode. They are the reason everybody's watching. Oh, let's be facts. honest. Yeah. No cap. So we pick up with them where we left off last week, right? Yeah. Like last week, they were arguing at the kitchen island because Natalia had found a dating app on Garrick's slimy motherfucking cheater ass phone. Yeah. And Danielle was like, yeah, Garrick, I told you a long time ago that you want to delete those apps and you shouldn't be on those dating sites. And he's like, well, I was just trying to tie up some loose ends. I mean, yeah. there's some relationships there that, you know, I just want to be careful. Like, I don't want to just ghost people. That's rude. Yeah. OK, this is the second fucking excuse he used for this, because last episode he was saying, oh, I had them disabled. I had all these apps on my phone still, but I had them disabled. And the girls were like. 
You can't get notifications right. for disabled apps, you stupid fuck. And he's like, yes, you can. I mean, yes, you, you can. can. What do you mean? Can you teach me how to work my phone? Because I'm obviously a boomer and I don't know how to do anything. Right. Acting like he's fucking stupid. And now we pick up in this episode him being like, oh, yeah, I was just trying to communicate with them, tying up loose ends before I proposed to Natalia. Right. In the same breath, also saying, but I still have to have five wives, though. And yeah. so I'm still going to be having these dating He apps, says though. that to the camera. He obviously doesn't have that conversation in the moment with Natalia. So yeah. with his fucking black wife beater on to the camera, he's like, well, she better get used to it, though. I know. Like, she may have a little problem with it now, the fact that I've got dating apps on my phone. And for right now, like, we don't have to go into it. But God has given me five wives. And those dating apps are coming back. Yeah. Whether she likes it or not. I couldn't believe he said that like you got some balls to say yeah. that on camera but you're not saying that in front of these no. women because you know they're going to get pissed and it's going to ruin your chances to bang Natalia that's right and she's going to dump your ass yep. and on this night as they're having this conversation Natalia's like I'm going to bed I don't want to have this conversation anymore so she leaves and it actually turns out that Garrick was going to propose to her that night I'm like <sighs> really we're out here proposing to people yeah. in two fucking days yeah even though he said, I think it was in his talking head, he's like, you know, it's hard because Natalia doesn't know me very well. And so she doesn't understand my intentions and doesn't know that I'm really a good guy at heart. I, I really have God's will and, and her best intentions at heart. But then saying I was going to propose to her. I'm like, so what is it? She doesn't know you mm -hmm. well? Or are you going to propose to her? And he was totally going to do that just to bang her. Yes. Which is so fucking disgusting. Yes. Which I wonder if we're going to see next episode. Like if he's ultimately going to propose to her and then want to be intimate with her. Well, I think that's the only reason he's doing it. Because right. for him and for Danielle, apparently, a proposal and acceptance of proposal is the gateway to the Punani. Yeah. And we see him in the preview with the ring. Yeah. But I'm still holding out hope that she at some point this season dumps their ass please catches him in another lie or something please the very next day yeah um danielle is downstairs at the table mm -hmm. eating breakfast and here comes garrick walking into the room looking really forlorn and Ugh. sad like i did a bad bad thing yeah and he looks like he's gonna cry with danielle and danielle wants to make him feel better and i think she says some fucked up shit like god's on our side yeah we're walking with God on this one. Yeah, she We're walking does. with God straight into her pussy. Yeah. Thank you, God, for... <laughs> I looked and there were only one set of footprints <laughs> on the way to her punani. And it was God. He was carrying me into her punani. <laughs> no, for real. <laughs> so fucking ridiculous. What that's exactly fuck? what they're saying. I know. It's so ridiculous. Jesus. God, I'm sorry. I know that's blasphemous. But no. I was like, why don't you just say that then? That's what they're trying to do. It's absolutely wild. <laughs> and like I think this is where Garrick gives her some stupid sorry ass apology and is like sorry I didn't delete the dating apps when you told me to I should have listened to you and deleted the um dating apps but I didn't and I'm sorry and I'm a sinner and uh just please forgive me does he even <laughs> say he's a sinner though I don't no, even that would that would kind of require him to acknowledge it but like yeah he just says grunty dumb man words yeah. and Danielle gets wet downstairs and she's just saying oh my god I love you Jesus is on our side where's Natalia let's bang her I know it's so fucking god, weird Stockholm syndrome for real what if she's like the mastermind though uh, that's what I'm saying what if it's Danielle's idea to have all of these women a harem if you will and she'll be like the madam in charge oh, of all the like women the mistress or yes, something. the Galen Maxwell, oh I'm telling God. you. So here comes sweet, innocent Natalia. Yes. Who has her own agenda, let's be Totes, real. Yeah. She comes down, she like gives a little massage to Danielle. She and then kisses she her on the cheek. Touches Garrick. Pets him. Ugh, and pets sits him. down next to him and he proceeds to apologize and starts to cry. One tear. It's like not even a tear. Like it's literally Robin Brown. It's like he's fake crying just to manipulate so he can get them back on his good side and and be like, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. And Natalia's like, it's fine that you have the apps. Like it's not a pro. It's or no, it's fine that you have the app. Just tell me about it. And Don't just be lie. Honest. Don't ever yep. lie to me. Yep. And then she somehow asks like, how many apps or I don't even remember how this came up, but it comes out that he actually doesn't have just one dating app yeah. on his phone. He has 10 dating apps. And she's like, 
10 fucking dating apps? Like, why? So, like, are you talking to women? I'm. This is what she's thinking. Are yeah. you talking to all sorts of women on 10 different apps? Like, what is really going on here? Yeah. And this is where Garrick just starts hemming and hawing. And he's talking about, I love my sisters. We put the sisters first. And I'm like, what's going on? What the heck? He starts fucking reading out of the Bible. I know. I'm David like, and Goliath? Or something? No. Yeah. Or like hyssop plant. Yeah. And it's for cleansing. Mm-hmm. And... I was like, what's happening? They're cleansing the infection. And so this is supposed to be metaphorical for this conflict, cleansing uh-huh. the infection of his sinful fucking lust out of his wound with hyssop. I'm like, I hate you so much. I know. Like I really, there's nothing about you that I find even slightly redeemable, especially nothing. when you fucking pull out the Bible and start sharing scriptures that she doesn't even understand because she speaks Portuguese <laughs> and you can't even be arsed to learn how to do that. No. Speak Portuguese. No. It's just these people are crazy to me, Beatrice. It's absolutely wild to me. And it's so crazy that he's like quoting scripture about cleansing his sinful deed of lying and having all these dating apps, but then he's just going to go back to having the dating apps. Yeah. Like the second they get back to America, he's going to download all of them again, including Grinder, And then like... Grindr. <laughs> <laughs> message people and be like hey you want to see my dick god said you want to see my dick yeah like, my, my just, holy dick <laughs> yeah so ridiculous it's really me. ridiculous but you know what the women have to take responsibility because here comes natalia 26 years of age a grown ass woman with a fully formed frontal lobe and everything and she's yeah. like you know what <laughs> I'm going to give him a second chance. Why? Because I love him. Why? And he's like kissing her shoulder and kissing her neck. And oh God, how I would beat him to death with a piece of fucking board if I had an opportunity. <laughs> fucking table, a fucking end table just right to the temple. I can't stand him. There's something about so him. I'm not though. But like there's <laughs> something about him that makes me want to pick up a fucking blunt object and make him disappear. Because he's a fucking predator and he's fucking terrible and he's manipulating sorry, is that all terrible? these women. Should we edit no. this out of or should I make no. that uncensored for the pod? That's just I'm being I'm being hyperbolic. But yeah. There's a, but like when I see him petting and kissing and I hear mouth noises, I've got that misophonia anyway. I'm just you like, do. oh my god, blot him from my consciousness. I know. Out, out, damn spot. And his fucking wife beaters. I can't. Although somebody commented on our uh, our YouTube and said that those are no not called wife beaters anymore. They're called wife pleasers. <laughs> Does a tank top please you? Sometimes. I mean, I mean, if, if the, it's a working if, if man, the, that's right? right. Like my husband, yeah, he's got those shoulders. Yeah, on him. He he's do. got them nice arms. He's got some tattoos, mm-hmm. and I don't mind seeing him in something like that. But Garrick, no, <laughs> Garrick, <laughs> fuck no. I know he's Ew. so fucking cringe, dude. Do you think Garrick has a big dick? Like, why are these no. women so obsessed? I with him, assure then? you, then he why does are not. they obsessed with him? Well, really, because Roberta dumped him. Natalia yeah, hasn't seen it yet. She gonna dump him Roberta too. Roberta was with him for three years. Okay, but she wasn't spending real time with him. She though, fucked right? him. Okay, Multiple there's times. no way. Danielle, that sixteen years. Squirmy little man has a ramrod shaft. <laughs> okay, that's pleasing <laughs> these women. No, he doesn't care about them. He does not care about them. He does not. God did not give him a column of a dick. Well, last uh, season when he had banged Roberta quickly in the hotel room. It was like literally within five minutes. He's yeah. Like, yeah. We had it too. It was oh, so awesome. And yeah. I'm like, really? Was it so awesome for, for Roberta? her pleasure? Okay. Yeah. No, it was not it. getting his rocks off. So they're called wife pleasers, huh? Yeah. Okay. Allegedly. Right. I don't know. According okay. to somebody on YouTube. I'm open. I'm yeah. open to whatever. I, I just know. feel like he looks preposterous when he wears them. Yeah. And I am confounded as to why he insists on doing so. I know. His black ones and his white ones. I'm I think like, it's because he thinks he looks hot, dude. I, know. I think he's like, I, I look know. so muscular. Because Some I've guys the think gym. they're hot and oh, they yeah. are not hot. Yeah. Sandoval. Not hot. Yeah. Tom Sandoval. Hate him. <laughs> I know. So then what's Danielle's fucking motivation for this? Because when I was watching this episode with your daughter last night and Natalia came downstairs and like gave Danielle a hug over the arm and kissed her on the mm. cheek, your daughter's like, um, that's gay. Like She's like, what is that? That's gay. And this is how Danielle was with Roberta last season. Like they were very like touchy feely, like kissing each other on the cheeks a lot. Like very kind of like weirdly intimate for just yeah. friends. Yeah. And so, like, I thought last year, I'm like, well, maybe Danielle gets, maybe she likes women. Maybe this is, like, a thing for her, too. Maybe Mm -hmm. they're just hiding behind religion. But then this season, I'm like, they're bringing it up a lot. I'm like, it can't just be, 
like she's not gay she's probably not doing anything with the women so what's her motivation yeah well that's what that's what really perplexes me because i can look at that piece of shit garrick and i know exactly what he's about he's about getting his pencil wet he's just about yeah. fucking and he's going to do it under the guise of religion because that's the only way that he's going to be able to pull it off with his existing wife so i see him and i understand him right but when i look at her i'm like are you a victim right like what's going on at home are you okay and or are you a, G a Ghislaine Maxwell? Mm -hmm. Are you wanting to be the madam of the whorehouse? Or I'm not that they're whores. I'm not trying to no, be yeah, judgmental. Yeah. But like, are you, what are you doing? Are you looking for sisters, for friends? Because it doesn't feel like that. But if for some reason she had some bisexual or homosexual urges mm -hmm. and she's like a fucking repressed Christian and doesn't know how to express that, maybe th then... I could have compassion for her. Right. I could be like, okay, she doesn't know how because she's in this fundamentalist evangelical Christianity. She doesn't know how to let herself express how she really feels. And so maybe this is her way of trying to working that work that out for herself. Mm -hmm. But I'm not getting the same vibe. And I dare say everything's a gay conspiracy with you yeah, guys. It is. It's, everything <laughs> is a gay conspiracy with you <laughs> guys. So I, I don't think that's what it is. I think yeah. that... I think that I actually think there's something diabolical about her. Really? Yeah, I think when she's sitting at the table with Natalia and she's like, trust me, he doesn't want to hurt you. And Natalia says to her, like, stop defending him. Yeah. Let him sit in his own consequences because this man lied to me. And Danielle was just like, whoa kind of taken aback it seemed like she was kind of taken back because this young girl is trying to teach you how to be a better wife and partner to this fucking fucked up man that you have right then you're being i don't and i'm just like what is she doing i feel like there's a chance that she's evil right and i'm just dang. gonna say that dang like hot take i think i think that she's I, they're not criminally trafficking but i mean i feel like it just has the vibes of it a little bit. And yeah. she's helping him to get access to these women. And I was reading on some of the subreddits, they're talking about like why he's targeting Brazilian women, mm -hmm. because I don't know if he is. I know there was one other one, Roberta. Yeah. But like we were talking about this last week. It's because they don't speak English. Mm -hmm. They don't understand him when he's talking, which is probably a benefit. Yeah. They have a completely different culture, like traditional, there's religion, different, there's differences in that way. Yeah. It's not like American women right. who are predominantly liberal and out here working, doing their own thing. Like you, it takes a certain kind of man for an American woman to get sprung. Right. I think. I yeah. Mean, I don't know. Why else would he be going across the pond or going to South America to get his women? Because nobody else wants to fuck him. How old was Roberta? I think in her 30s or something right. like so that. Right, so she was so. probably a smart woman. Yeah, she was. And accomplished somewhat, yeah, right? but she was with them for three years. But they also gave her $10,000. Yeah, so, so she was scamming? I don't I mean, know. I don't know. See, like for me with Danielle, I guess I err more on the side of her being a victim because then she says things like, you know, she can't say her real feelings because Garrick will get infuriated and um, she's always crying like all the time and being like i'm not comfortable with this but it's god's will so i'm gonna have to go with it and so she's like indoctrinating her own self but then at the same time it's like kind of blurs the lines of like well how much are you a victim when you know it's wrong like you know intrinsically this is wrong and that you're uncomfortable with this and this is not cool but you're still doing it right and you're like, facilitating why? it like, yeah. yeah you're enabling it enabling it yeah yeah it's you're like making people... it possible for him to bring this girl to america and then promptly download more dating apps and then go out and get other women even though she doesn't want that so yeah. you are aiding and abetting yeah well, this it's like, chicanery it's all the family on um like 90 or my 600 pound life it's always yeah. those people like they're always enabling these people to make the worst decisions for themselves but then they're like oh, i don't know i don't know what else to do and it's like you do know what else well, to do. Well, but usually those people, those orbiters on My 600 Pound Life, they're collecting a paycheck for being caretakers. Right. There is a reason they're motivated to do the things that they're doing. Sometimes it's because they love them and they don't know what else to do. But a lot of these people are getting something out of it. Mm -hmm. And so that's the question I think we have to ask about Danielle. Like, what are you getting out of this right i'm like your husband divorces you for roberta and then he's still like trying to get all these other brazilian women and so it's like what are you getting yeah. out of it i guess a provider like maybe you don't have to work because you're doing this show and he's got this business where he built one house <laughs> and it's like through her dad or whatever right uh, so no, through her dad i don't know it's like a, i don't even i it's don't like know all a mess. what the finances are but i do know that just 10 years ago they were bankrupt af so i'm not sure that they've ever really lived a life of 
turbo privilege. Yeah. Like the house that they're in now in Buena Vista, Colorado, like that they're selling for $2 million. That's like a lot of money, but I just don't know that that's always how they've lived. Mm -hmm. So she could be motivated by being on the show. She could be motivated by money and what he's providing, but I don't, I, I just, I don't know. It's just so crazy and it doesn't make any fucking sense, especially with how many people in the world, including us, yeah. are telling Danielle and screaming into the void, like, please leave this guy. Like, why are you with him? Why do you continue to subject yourself to this treatment? And allow this, but I don't know. Man. Maybe she's evil. Maybe. Let's get on to the next couple. Who is it? Uh, the Sal Houdin. Oh, the Shabooties. The Shabooties. 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 <laughs> Shabooties. We did. I missed them. We missed them the last two episodes. So what I recall of them is they're going, are they going to somewhere in Georgia? Yeah. They're going to Georgia. To meet Keisha. Keisha. They've been talking to Keisha for quite some time. Mm -hmm. We hear from Mr. Shibuti that he talks to her almost every day. Yeah. They are talking about homes, where they're uh -huh. going to live. He's really into it. Mm -hmm. They feel like they're forging a connection. So yeah. they are excited, honey, yeah. to drive down to Georgia and to meet Keisha once and for all. They stop at some flower farm. Yeah, to get flowers for her and this lady. They tell her, yeah, we're getting this for a, a sister wife. And she's like, what? Mm -hmm. What the fuck? And doesn't she call them like assholes or something? She did. She, well, it's like they so desperately wanted to share with her what a polygamist is. And so she's like, do you know what that is? Naima yeah. says that or Nyla says that. And the lady's like, uh, no. <laughs> and she's like, well, it means like we're bringing on another sister. No, 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 no. We want to add to her family. And this lady doesn't give a fuck. No. And then to the camera, she's the producer asks this lady, this Flora, so what do you think of it? And she's like, I think they're assholes. <laughs> I think one is enough. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. I was like, that's a little judgy. <laughs> well, we're judging too. Right, but we have every right to because we have a comprehensive background of understanding sure. polygamists vis-a-vis yeah. -vis the Brown family. Uh -huh. but, like this woman is just making a bouquet. <laughs> like if somebody came into my place of business, which I don't have one, but if they did and they said, yeah, this is for my other wife, I'd be like, I don't care. Give uh, me my money. Get the fuck out of here. It's 2024. Let people be free, Beatrice. I mean, I'm so judgy, though. Like, I'm always you judging are. people. And people Alternative watching. lifestyles. Yeah. You're like, oh, my God. I'm like, I'm wow. So how shocked. dare you? me living a whole ass lesbian life. And <laughs> Big old gay I'm lesbian. allowed to judge people OK, here. is that right? Yeah, because it gives you the privilege. Yeah, because you're gay. Everyone else judges me. Oh, well, nobody me, nobody yeah. judges you. Who judges? Tell me who's judging you. I'll tell you. OK, you better tell me who's judging you. <laughs> a bone to pick with them they don't want brass knuckles honey <laughs> give me a board no for but real. yeah so the shibooties are excited <laughs> the they've got i'm sorry they've got some, <laughs> they've got a beautiful bouquet Ooh. of flowers yeah. based on what keisha likes because i think keisha likes pink roses or peonies or something yeah and so they get back in the car they continue their drive and uh-oh yeah. In comes a text. They get a fucking text. I think it was uh, uh Mrs. Shibuti, Nyla, yeah. gets the text from her. And Keisha's like, yeah, so I know you guys are sp like literally on your way and to be here. And you're supposed to be here. But I've got a bunch of loose ends to tie up. I got to move in with my cousin or something. I got to pack up my stuff. I can't like, just <laughs> the like. The day of <laughs> as they're driving there. She's like, I'm still at work. I got to do all this shit. I'm like, the fuck yeah and even nyla looks to neem and she's like um yeah i think she's bailing on us and they're both pretty sad about it they are all getting ghosted out here yeah it's becky funny. and justin the shibuti yeah because y'all are weird i'm sorry the davis clan danielle's ghosting yeah it's yeah because it's fucking weird man yeah it will it's I a little mean, strange but she is getting nervous this Keisha I feel like we see Keisha in other previews though like we've seen her before so I think she's gonna come back around I mean right that's what I thought because we had that preview of them having lunch with her or dinner with her and he's like oh I want to bang her I'm ready to go I'm like I'm what the get heck? this dick out honey well and speaking of intimacy yeah they had a talk about the intimacy like they did at the florist they were talking yeah. about that after the florist and um Nyla was saying that there's no kissing, no any kind of in intimacy at all until marriage, right? Or until like commitment. A commitment or marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Like, same thing with the Maryfields yep. where it's kind of a blurred line yeah. there. If, he's, if he proposes, then he can fuck. Right. Then it's okay. But I guess they had an instance where they were dating another chick, right? And um, once the chick was talking with Naeem a lot, then she stopped talking to Nyla completely. Right. And then that, fucked up their boundary and everything and made Nyla feel a little insecure about it. Sure. Insecure about her husband cheating on her with somebody yeah. in the name of a Allah. 
A name of all of them. <laughs> the name of this dick. Yeah. The name of these nuts. Yeah. <laughs> For real. Oh, it's so he gets crazy. upset, right? Yeah. And he's just like, what the fuck? Yeah. All the way over here with his dumbass floral arrangement from that white supremacist. <laughs> So I guess we'll just go, though. I mean, we're already here. Let's just check into our Airbnb and go to some weird restaurant and have a nice night. Yeah, because they had reservations. And he's like, you're beautiful. I'm hot as fuck. So let's go have a date. Which I was like, that's cool. Yeah. Whatever. And so they go have dinner there and eat some weird shit. Yeah, but they have a conversation about like how they're going to approach dating from here on out. He's like, can we just meet somebody local? Yeah. Like always meeting people on social media and you know, trying to entice them to meet up with us and enter into a relationship. Like, it would be so much more awesome if, like, they were in the town over from us. We could see them every week. And she made a good point. She's like, I like social media because all the apps that we're on are polygamous apps. Right. So everybody enters into the app with the expectation that this is what the fuck it is. Right. And so it's not a shock, you know, when we meet somebody and then say, oh, by the way, we'd like you to be our sister wife. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Do you work out? Like Justin. (laughs) Um, So she was saying that she likes social media, but he just wants a change. He's kind of tired of what feels like a pattern of people disappointing them yeah well i mean that's what you get though like social media like everybody's catfishing everybody nowadays Mm -hmm. i mean like there's nobody real online anymore yeah so i mean it's fair and it doesn't don't they have a a conversation about like meeting people in person and how she's like nervous about meeting people in person or like going to bars and stuff and trying to talk to people because she's like, I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah. And he has no problem with it. Yeah, of course. He's like, I got no problem. This is what I want to do. I'm good at it. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, you're going to have to bring your wife along in all of these endeavors. And as we have seen in a previous preview, there's going to be a night out with Keisha where he's going to be like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get these nuts out. I'm ready to have some fun. Oh. And Nyla is going to be like, pump the brakes. Mm-hmm. She's going to be very upset. And I that can't wait. Is always like jealousy is always the problem. I don't know how these women keep talking themselves into like, it's going to be so great having a sister wife. How do you talk yourself into this bullshit without knowing how you're going to respond to when she wants to drop that ass. I know. What these men tend to do, and I know Cody Brown did this, and I think Naima's going to probably think this, is like, well, it was your fucking idea. Like with Mary Brown bringing Robin in, right? right. It was your idea. And so now you want to be jealous about it? Right. With Cody Brown, and, and I guess in the AUB or Mormonism, it's like a ministry of loneliness or ministry of fucking suffering and jealousy. Like that's your lot in life as right. a woman. That's what you have to put on the altar to serve your God. I don't know how it works in Islam, but I think Naim is going to be like, this was your idea. Like this is what you wanted. And so now here we are. I'm confronted with a beautiful Keisha. Mm-hmm. I want to hit it. I like it. I'm ready to commit. And now you're going to have a problem? Yeah. Like why though? It doesn't make any sense. Like, I don't get it. I, I could never do it. No, not no. ever. Like literally ever. Even if God came down right now and was like, Delia, yeah. you need to let your husband, your no. handsome catch of yeah, a no. man. Earl's got to die. Fuck other people. That's absolutely not. <laughs> no. Like literally That's me no. And you. Get an Earl. Yeah. And Earl's got to die. <laughs> it's just never. It's, I'm just never. not built for that. Sorry. No That's way. not my ministry. No way. My ministry is violence. <laughs> yeah. Obviously. My ministry is violence, <laughs> ministry is smutty violence. books, <laughs> and, and reality TV, and food. And Velveeta cheese. Thank you. <laughs> but not that. No. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. All right. Next couple we have is the Ryans, and they're heading to... <laughs> Colorado. Colorado. Right? I from, thought so. From Texas. Yeah. Yeah. So they're com- they're going a 12 hour ride yeah. to Colorado. So they're probably somewhere in North Texas. That's somewhere around fucking us. Well, they're in Salina, Texas. I don't know, I don't know where that's Me at. But when they said 12 hour drive, I'm like immediately thinking yeah. Colorado. <laughs> yeah. And then they show up and it's like in like Eastern Colorado or something. It's not even in a pretty area. I have no idea. I All looked. I know is that this Stephanie chick who they're still pixelating. So I would presume she does not want her identity known even now which Mm -hmm. sort of foreshadows that it never really works out Mm -hmm. and they're even like blurring the highway and they're blurring i think denver like the parts of denver like so she does not want to be affiliated with these fucking assholes Mm -hmm. so apparently she talked to justin and she's like justin i miss you so much Uh, and i want you to get up here to colorado right now and he's like 
yes bitch yes books a hotel tells becky and they make plans and then stephanie immediately vacillates and she's like you know what never mind i'm actually busy please don't come yeah but they're coming anyway yeah they're coming anyway and we're just going to go to her house and we're just going to see what happens but it's the interstitials it's the conversations that just justin is having to the camera when he's like i love her so much i've never loved a woman like this before i mean except for except becky, for becky. <laughs> yeah like an afterthought like i can see me loving her for the rest of my life and becky talk about giving me weird um lesbian bisexual uh-huh, vibes she's uh-huh. just like yeah i can see us being grandmothers together and it's like robin brown's vision of sitting on the porch mm-hmm. in her rocking chair like becky can see it with stephanie yeah so he's sprung and loves stephanie and she's like down for it too yeah this is what makes me think that they're like actually just swingers or something because mm-hmm. they are so fucking weird i know we talked about it a lot last episode with like her weird religious cult background pedophilic bullshit but like they just to me i'm like you guys are a thruple it's really weird maybe that's why stephanie doesn't want to be a part of it because that's kind of taboo i mean being a sister wife is also kind of taboo too it's kind of weird but i'm like you live in colorado which is kind of liberal and so i'm like nobody's gonna care well she probably doesn't want to be identified with them because they're lame right (laughs) because they're la hoosers because they come from a fucking apocalyptic pedophile cult well but she's texting justin and being like baby i miss you i miss that big old dick ew and he's only known her for nine months if that and all of a sudden you love her as much as you've loved your wife of 26 years or whatever becky who you married when she was a teenager child bride i mean he said he would die for her he's like i I would take a bullet for her like oh god i'm like god calm Calm down down. so they get to colorado yeah and then they drive to her gym i know and they're like you know she was talking about wanting to get back into working out and so we're just gonna go pay up her membership for her we're gonna renew her membership and i'm like what do you mean like that's fucking weird and so then they go and renew it and i'm like are you doing this because you want her to have a tight body or are you doing this because you want it to be a gesture of how you want to take care of her like it's just so rando to me Mm -hmm. to pay for my fucking gym membership i know it's really bizarre and i thought that too i'm like is that because he wants her to go back and lose weight you work out desiree yeah you know that's one of the questions he asked that he chick wants at a the nice bar. fit tight body yeah just like he's his. a perv yeah. okay like because he's smush your a fucking piece. hair on your head a little bit more <laughs> so we can all dude. pretend you're not bald dude and wear a fucking wife pleaser because <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he's hot too and i'm like you are so like he's like he reminds me of, like peanut butter like he's like you you would eat it because it's there but like you don't miss it you know what i mean yeah you never think about no, it no exactly like, it's not like you're making recipes it's unless like it's thai special. food but like you're really not making recipes with peanut butter. Special. like no it is not neither is becky no she's so fucking weird dude she is she's bizarre. wearing the necklace that stephanie gave to her as a gesture of their impending sisterhood that was weird she's wearing it up to colorado and then they pull up to this poor stephanie's house yeah right and justin who if you recall, <laughs> when they were going to approach Desiree, he got up and went to the car to get his business cards right. because he's such a loser. Yeah. And Becky had to be his wingman. Well, here again, Justin stays in the car. This is the guy who loves her and will take a bullet for her and uh-huh. wants to rail her so bad in yeah. his pants. So bad. He's He can't do it. He's got no game. So yeah. Becky is the one who trudges out there and knocks on the door. Yeah. And some woman answers stuff. and then that's the end of it. Like, yeah. we, I don't know if it's going to be Stephanie. No. It'll it could be, be a somebody. producer fake out. It could be like somebody who lives there yeah or but i just love that they keep getting ghosted and dumped and they're so desperate for anybody i'm like it's so fucking weird to me and that's why i'm like thinking if becky's the one that's going up there and she's wearing this necklace that stephanie gave her this friendship necklace or whatever i'm like you're fucking stephanie too right yeah like it's kind of weird this necklace looks so great when i'm naked stephanie uh, ew eating your box stephanie ew. it's kind of like coupled which is fine it's not you because it's bisexual or anything it's just well, like they seem like predators it's yeah. you because they're culty predators because they're weird and they give me weird vibes and like if i was stephanie i would be vacillating back and forth too i'd be like oh, you guys give me the creeps but yeah like if i'm drunk enough 
maybe I'll do it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, like she's like booty vibe. calling or like she's texting him in the middle of the night when then, she's a little. I mean, I, I can't, I can't I see can't. a world where I would ever do that with somebody no. like Justin. But like, who knows? Maybe that's Stephanie's thing. Maybe it's got a big old dick, honey. That's what I'm saying. Like the hammer of God <laughs> <laughs> in his oh The hammer God. of God. And so maybe Stephanie got a piece of that, and she's like, I need a little bit more. <laughs> but don't bring your lame fucking wife. Well, let me ask you this: If you had to pick between Justin or Garrick. Which one has the most sex appeal? <laughs> Which one? How dare you? I'm just, I'm saying, if they were Make the only me two choose, men. It, I would have to choose Justin. Justin, right? Like, I, I know. I, I, there's no theory under which I would ever be able to not be homicidal. Right. With Garrick. I know. But I mean, I wouldn't be happy about it. <laughs> You'd be suffering. Yeah, no, I'm not into it. Well, like I so, said. So, so bad. When we first got introduced to this couple at the beginning of the series, I had that theory of like, well, maybe Becky's so gung-ho on this because she wants her husband to fuck somebody else. Yeah. She's over fucking him because it's been 26 years and he's a weirdo. I really don't think most uh, women feel that way. Um, most monogamous women. So I, I mean, maybe she's a true blue polygamist, but... I don't know. They're fucking weird. They're going to see Stephanie maybe or see Stephanie's friend or whatever. And then they're going to be like, yeah, we're going to file a police report because you're stalking me. <laughs> and that's going to be. And the then they're going to drive back to Texas and they're still going to be alone forever. Well, and they said the whole reason why they came up there in general. They're like, even though she told us not to come and she's ignoring our calls now and our texts, we're still going to go because this is going to be our final last hurrah. Like we're mm -hmm. not going to do this anymore because yeah. apparently this has been like a recurring thing. Right. Where like they would all hook up. They'd have great weekends together, like Brokeback Mountain or some shit. And then they'd come back to their real lives and then they would, you know, go months or whatever without seeing each other. And so I don't know how much I believe about that because if he's mm -hmm. so in love with Stephanie, I'm like, I feel like it's just going to be a continued thing. And so I'm like, you're just going to keep driving up to Colorado. Yeah. Your Brokeback Mountain trips. Well, I just kind of like that uh, Stephanie just keeps punking them. Like, <laughs> dri they drive 12 hours and she's just going to be like ghosting thanks for renewing my membership yeah <laughs> appreciate it appreciate it god well last but not least we have the davis family who are yeah. the most boring nothing burger april and danielle talk because april wants to talk to danielle about how it really affected her yeah that she left for two days the matriarch of the family it's like my responsibility to keep all the hoes together yeah. in the house <laughs> there's hoes in this house we gotta keep them there and so i really didn't get it when all of a sudden I woke up and one of my hoes was gone. Where'd my hoe go? Yeah. Danielle starts crying while she's folding the same piece of laundry over and over again. <laughs> she's like, well, I just, I don't know. I was having second thoughts and I just didn't feel really bad, but I promise it's not going to happen again. And April's like, well, it's really concerning to me that like you went and got a whole ass apartment with all of your separate finances. Notice she but, mentioned the finances. Though, yeah, right? she did. Did yeah. you notice she mentioned the yeah, finances? I did. She's like, I noticed like you just went and did this whole huge power move with your own finances and it was like really startling to all of us and jen was really upset and we uh -huh. didn't know what was going on and then vera <laughs> i was with vera trying to help her to brush her teeth and she's like no only mommy danielle can help me to brush my teeth drama okay and drama then danielle queen. just starts crying mm -hmm. because you know that's something she does with vera every night no matter what that's wow. her mommy duty Amazing. and so she's like and i love my children so much i'm like bitch you're 24 years old you've been with this family for what, like a year and a half yeah. you've got children and wives okay lady yeah it's really fucking weird and then i think april it says at some point well if it makes you feel any better we'll you know take it really slow with dating we won't be dating anytime soon yeah we choose you we choose you. and we understand what you need and yeah what's making you comfortable and uncomfortable so we're going to choose you and not bring any other women in right now and then danielle's like okay baby yeah thank you baby that's when she said that i'm like okay that is weird right there i'm like the fact that she's calling her baby well foot bed i'm like y'all are fucking group bed we sleep together in the bed yeah, sleeping in the bed you have yeah orgies. i mean i did feel that yeah. i felt that a little bit the way that they were crying and loving each other and i'm like oh, looking at each other i wonder if you touch each other's bits oh yeah well maybe, i hope so get it maybe april and danielle are far off in the orbit so they gotta get it right. somehow <laughs> that's right, right. <laughs> they're not that close to the sun yeah jen AKA is close Nick. to the sun yeah so april and Danielle only have each other. Yeah. Those cold nights in that Ooh. big ass bed when oh, Jen yeah. and Nick are in a boom boom, in the boom, room. boom room. Just me and you, baby. Uh. Anything you 
want to do tonight. It's you our little know. secret, baby. That's right. They're oh, totally it all on. fucking, dude. All of them hey, are fucking. More power to them. That's great. If they like it, I love it. That's cool. Just be honest. I mean, hey, Nick is like living the best life. He's like, sweet. I don't have to fucking work. That's right. I got three women paying my bills. Oh, my God. I, I get to read smut all day and Wear I get to fuck. awesome shirts. Take I mean, care of my baby all day. <laughs> He's got a great life. He does. And I think that's wonderful. And yeah. if everybody consents, once again, I say, that's wonderful. The only thing I'm worried about here is that Danielle is awfully young. Yeah. She's a young girl. She's 24 years old. Yeah. And she has issues with the entire structure of this family and their vision going forward. And so I'm yeah. like, why are we here? Why are you doing this? Are you too young to really understand the ramifications of what you're doing? But that's what makes it entertaining. Oh, yeah. And that's and why we watch. Of course. And that's how she was last season, too. She was like, oh, I don't know if I want to be with you, Nick, but I love you so much. And I love that dick. So I guess I'll take a chance on you guys. I'll take a chance on love. I'm wondering if she's going to end up pregnant or something. Oh, God. At the end of this season. I mean, they ain't got nothing else going on in this family. Like, everything else is fine besides Danielle yeah. being wishy-washy. The only other storyline is another woman or, and, another or a baby. child. Yeah, yeah, or whether Danielle's going to stay or go. But Danielle promises mm -hmm. with tears streaming down her face, does she promise to April, <laughs> I will never do that shit again. Ever, never going to leave in the middle of the night, not let you know. That's not ever going to happen. And April's happy. Yeah. And the end. The end. That That's was it. it. That was the episode. And then we have some previews. We have the Shibutis. Yeah. They're having dinner. Or they're hanging out with his mom. Yeah. And they're Based. talking. About I love this woman so much. Yes. So fucking great. Yes. And she's like, um, if you find somebody, you can't come over to my house. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. I love that. I love it too. I like, think that's great. I think her son is like, so you're telling me. If we like find somebody, I can't even come to your house. She's like, oh, that's no. exactly what I'm telling you. Yeah. Boundaries. Bye. How do you like me now? Would you do that with me? If you found another woman? Yeah. But, I, you know, me and your daughter talked about it and it was like a consensual thing. We're like going to have a sister wife or something. I'd be fine with that. Yeah. You'd let them come over. Some rando. If y'all are happy with it. Wow. Yeah. I, I would trust your judgment, too. I don't think you're just going to bring on some well, trash raccoon. Naeem and Nyla are happy with it. Okay. Well, but... I think that mother knows her son. Facts. So, and you see them at the dining table going at it together. So yeah. like they've got context and history, like, and I know you and yeah. I know my daughter. And if all of a sudden it was your bu brilliant idea to have another wife and you guys are super into it. First of all, I think you would bring a person of quality because you guys are people of quality well, yeah. and you always attract what you are. Right. And I don't think you would ever like make a decision like that without really thinking it through right. to change the family dynamic. So if you brought a bitch up in here, I'd be like, <laughs> hello, let's make some dinner. I oh would, my God. I'm fully supportive of the yeah. shit you want to do. I feel right. like I'm such a good mother. -in -law. I mean, you are the really good mother-in-law. Yeah. You're like the top. Yeah. So but sweet. like Mrs. Uh, Shabuti, Mama yeah. Shabuti, she's just Mama. like, you're so full of shit, Naeem. <laughs> like, don't come over here with your bullshit. I Just love Keep it that. out of my fucking house. So great. Yeah, I love it. So great. We love a boundary. We do. And then we have Shane asking Sarah whether she'd be in poly polyamory because I guess Ashley is still dating Sarah, the weird girl who's never been in a polygamous. Well, he asks her directly, like, are you cool with what we're doing? Yeah. And, she's, and have you ever had that experience? And it's interesting because you brought this up last week. You're yeah. like, I feel like she just had some threesomes. Uh -huh. She had some fun or something. Mm -hmm. And she actually said, yeah, I've never been in this kind of a relationship. I've only done friends with benefits or dating. And this to Shane is a really big red flag. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's a big red flag? Yeah. 100%. And mm. this was my fake psychic prediction last episode because I'm like, I know this chick has never been in this kind of a dynamic before and it's going to be weird. Like, it's not the same thing as you coming in as a third for like um, threesomes and shit mm -hmm. or like a polyamorous relationship where you guys are like all fucking and Shane gets to fuck you too. It's not that. You're just with the girl. And this girl, Sarah, last episode was like, yeah, I've never just been with a girl. Like, I'm bi, yeah. and I usually prefer the men. Right. So she's going to want a man in there somehow. And unless mm. Shane is going to be willing to do that, which he's not, because he's faithful to Ashley. I'm like, why? Ashley, I don't know. Why? I don't know. But, yeah, I think it's a red flag. Yeah, I, think she's I mean, not I, be I feel like 
Sarah is open to learning about their lifestyle and potentially participating in it, but she's going to need to like ease her way into it by fucking Ashley a lot. Yeah. God. <laughs> and, just, and having it be maybe a little bit more casual yeah. before she makes a big commitment to these two people who've got two kids. Right. Like how does she fit into that family structure? So I think it'll be interesting. Yeah, I think Shane's a little upset, but I mean like it's – it's going to be the unicorn that you find that's going to be okay with y'all having kids, continuing to have kids, can't touch the man, only touches the women. We're going to yeah. live together. Like, it's going to be a certain person you're going to have to keep looking. Even then, it's such a fucking weird dynamic to me because I'm just like, Shane doesn't get anything out of it unless he's a cuckold or something mm-hmm. and he's watching. But like, he just doesn't get any anything out of it. Like, what does he get a brother husband? Does he get a, a sister wife himself? Like, he doesn't get any of that. He just has to watch his wife, the yeah, mother of his children. Yeah, but then again, what is Shane asking for? Like, I is mean, Shane advocating for himself? It seems to me that Shane is like a big fucking doormat who uh, allows himself to be emasculated. Now, first and foremost, like, it's not good to emasculate. And so if right. Ashley is doing that, which I think she is, that's not good. Mm-hmm. But also, you're allowing yourself to be a doormat and be emasculated. And so, like, you get what you settle for. So why right. aren't you opening your mouth, using your big boy words, and saying, I don't want to do this, and or what about me? Right. But he's not going to. No. And that's what's so fucked up. And I don't know. I think he's going to have a problem when he starts seeing his wife actually interact with these women mm-hmm. in like a loving, romantic, kissing on a kissing him. Yeah. way. I and think like, he will as well. He's going to have a huge problem because it's one thing when you're letting your wife go out and do these dates and you don't know what she's doing and she comes home and tells you what she did and you don't have to see it. But when it's in your face, that's when I would have I'd be like, nope, no, nope. bye. Yeah. We're getting divorced. Live your bisexual life. Peace. Well, you also didn't mention in the preview, we have Garrick pulling that box out of his coat and there's a ring in that box and he's going to be proposing (sighs) to Natalia because I think the Cancun vacation is wrapping up. He probably only has one more night to bang her. Mm -hmm. So he better get that ring out. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. Even though Danielle says she's not okay with it. She's like, I don't feel like we're sisters. Yep. I don't feel like close but your husband's gonna do it anyway he doesn't care about you he doesn't give a shit if you have a reservation it does not register with him he don't give a shit about you and i can't wait to see it yes bitch is there anything else that we have to say about this or any other thoughts that you have that's pretty much it i mean i'm still enjoying the show even for like a boring episode it's still a good show oh yeah and i think there are a lot of really cool things to come yeah so we will be back next week without a doubt to continue our discussion of seeking sister wife and until then is there anything else that we need to say to these raccoons beatrice well if you love our podcast you better wow be going to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review Ah! thank you in advance it really helps us grow the pod so we really appreciate it we are going to be back later this week to talk the valley and also a vanderpump rules uh so make sure to come back for that and until then please don't forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out bye bye guys